Better weather there at Murray. Jay Alter with you will be joined by Taylor Davis on the sideline in just a moment. Aaron, it's a new team. They're preparing for a new yep. season in the fall, but the expectations, they remain the same here at Georgia. Well, you know, they're a little salty here in Athens, Georgia. Left out of the playoffs last season after going 12 and 1, only lost Alabama in Atlanta. You went back to back natties. You go 12 and 1, and they feel like they have the pieces to make it run back to the playoffs this season and then get that third national championship in four years. So you take a look at the last three seasons, and the Bulldogs have as many losses as they have national titles back to back in 21 and 22 and of course the three-peat denied in the SEC championship and they got their revenge in the Orange Bowl a 63 to 3 throttling of Florida State you take a look at who's coming back from that 23 team all eyes on the returning quarterback Carson Beck and a guy you look at the NFL draft this year I believe would have been the number four quarterback taken off the board so you're saying a top 20 pick in the NFL draft here in a few weeks is going to be on campus rocking the red and black next season I think has a chance to be one of the top picks in the NFL draft next year so I'm excited to see what he could do year two as a starting quarterback and let's check in with the Bulldogs head coach Kirby Smart who's down with our Taylor Davis thank Thank you, Jay. Well, Coach, you told us this week you never take for granted the opportunity to dress out and play in Stanford Stadium. What are you looking for from your group today? I'm looking for intensity. We want to have a game. We want to treat it like we're playing uh, Clemson today, like we're playing Georgia today. we got a great opponent. We want to go out and get better. What have you seen from your quarterback, Carson Beck, this spring as he comes back after a full year as a starter? A lot of poise, uh, a lot of moxie, a lot, of, a lot better leadership. So he's growing as a player. Hey, it's a beautiful day to do it. Go enjoy it. Let's go, dogs. Well, Kirby Smart said it best yesterday. When you look at the spring game, this is good on good. First team offense against first team defense. And we are underway in Athens. And it's an awesome atmosphere here at Sanford Stadium. It's just the environment leading up to the game, Aaron. You would really never know it's a spring football game. And that's exactly the attitude Kirby Smart wants Carson Beck and his players to have today. You know, it's funny, you bring up the good versus good, and he said this yesterday in our in our, in our meeting with the coaching staff, he said this may be the best team you face the entire season, and he's not lying. I know there's Clemson and Texas and Alabama and Ole Miss on that schedule, but the guys across from you right now might be the most talented defense and offense you'll see all season long here this afternoon. 25, every time. And as we get our first look at Carson Beck in this Georgia first team offense, Bulldog fans excited to see Trevor Etienne in a Georgia uniform for the first time, but it'll be Roderick Robinson who starts to the backfield. Quick hitter out to the flat. So many weapons in that wide receiver room, Aaron, and I think people are focused on who Georgia lost yep. last season, but there's a lot of strength in that room. Yes, sir, yes, sir, uh, I was yes, asked this a, a bunch today, even throughout the uh, the, the pregame warm-ups of, you know, they're losing Brock Bowers and losing Lyle McConkie and Rosemary Jack Saint had an incredible season last year. I said, well, let's focus on who they actually do have returning. And there's a lot of talent, both at the tight end position and outside the receiving position as well for Carson Beck. Robinson, the first carry of the day. Rumbles forward, the sophomore who returns big, but he's got speed, not just a bruiser out of the backfield. And it's a stable of backs as it always is for Georgia. Well, I know they're expecting big things from Roger Robinson, six foot, 240, 245. He is an absolute bruiser, but you said it best. He's actually the fastest guy in that room. He's a home run threat. So, I mean, I, I don't know what you do, you're a safety. It's 240 running full speed at you. He's an opportunity to have a massive season this year for the Bulldogs. First test for the first team defense in black. Third and one trying to get Carson Beck in the offense off the field. And that offensive line pushing the pile to move the chains. This offensive line might be the best unit on this Georgia team. Well, that's the funny thing we just saw right there. We talked about the size of, of Roger Robinson and, you know, third down situations like that, able to put his shoulder down to get the first down. But you didn't bring up the, this offensive line. And Georgia's had one of the premier offensive lines in college football since Kirby really got here. And the, the belief is this could be actually the best unit since 2016. Carson Beck again, a smooth delivery, comfortable, confident a year ago 
There were all the question marks about Carson Beck. He has silenced any doubters. And he spoke about that offensive line, Aaron. He said this is the best offensive line in the country. They are going to win the Joe Moore Award, which goes to the best offensive line after the fall. And you look at that projecting starting offensive line. Jared Wilson's really the only new name, and Kirby Smart heaped a ton of praise on his new center. Yeah, I loved him and just his his speed. We, you know, we talk about with with Roger Robinson the speed. Jared has has shown 20 miles per hour, if not faster, in, in practices this season. And Beck delivers it right on the money. Dylan Bell. Reliable hands for Beck. And that offensive line gave him a clean pocket. Uh, and that's someone we ask, you know, people ask, well, how do you replace Brock Bowers and all the things that Brock did from, you know, splitting out to the outside to being in the slot to getting even jet sweeps. Dylan Bell, while he may not put his hand in the dirt, he's that Army Swift knife, Swiss knife that you can move around the offense. Another play action for Beck. Unloads the deep ball, double coverage, and it sails incomplete. Tried to go right back to Bell. That's a route that Carson Beck struggled with last season, the post route. And a couple times under throw, just never really built the chemistry with his receivers to throw it down the field. And I'm sure he was looking to kind of silence some critics of his down the field attempts last season by getting the big play to start this scrimmage off here this afternoon. Set to throw again out of the backfield. Trevor Etienne with his first play in a Georgia uniform. Big expectations coming with Etienne from Gainesville to Athens. He had a terrific career in Florida. In two seasons, nearly 1,500 yards rushing, 14 touchdowns. Well, I think that's what they like from him. Not only running the football, but catching it out of the backfield. And you look at Georgia under, under Todd Munkin. So much of the offense went through, obviously, Brock Bowers, but running backs catching it out of the backfield as well. And I feel like that was part of the missing piece of this offense last year. Great blocking by that offensive line. Beck floats it incomplete. Dominic Lovett, his first target of the spring game so far. I want to go back to the weapons you brought up and you know, I kind of hit on the, the fact that Georgia does have a, an array of talent coming back this season. Oscar Delp, Lawson Lucky at the tight end position. Oscar obviously played a ton last year, but two guys to really keep your eyes on. Eyes on us, a beautiful throw from Carson there. Dom Lovin and Ra Ra Thomas, the two big transfers last year, now year two in the offense. Really expect those guys to take their game to another level. Robinson swallowed up. And we spent a lot of time talking about this first team offense for Georgia. First team defense getting a real test here. Raylan Wilson makes the tackle there. They return a lot of guys, but young guys, underclassmen, sophomores, who have a lot of experience because they played their freshman year. Yeah, it is, it's, it's a very young defense, and it's funny, you look at last year's recruiting class, a lot of four- and five-star guys, which is usual for Georgia, on that defensive side of the football. Now these guys are in their second spring, heading into their second year. Expectations that they themselves take a, their step up. We'll not see Malachi Sark so unfortunately this afternoon. Third and long, back to the end zone. It's caught, but incomplete. Bell didn't get a foot in bounds. Next pass was caught by Dylan Bell. What an absolutely dime, and I think he got in. He I think that right foot is in. And you and I today, there is no replay officials. I think you and I are tasked with that. <laughs> So I might need to call down to the field and say, hey, overturned, right foot down, touchdown 86. So the offense was really rolling there on the opening drive, and the defense bows up, forces a 42-yard field goal attempt for Peyton Woodring. Came in his freshman season and won the primary kicking duties. And he puts it right down the middle from 42. Now Kirby Smart said it best. Good on good. Offense versus defense. We're just getting started in Athens. Oh, it's just a gorgeous day for football in Athens, Georgia. And what's better than this? Getting a preview 
of one of the preseason favorites for this fall, Aaron Murray, Jay Alter, Taylor Davis with you. Doing construction on one side of the stadium. <laughs> on the side that's open, it is packed an awesome atmosphere at Sanford Stadium between the hedges. So we just saw the first team offense go against the first team defense. Now you'll get the second team offense against the second team defense. Anthony Evans on the return. And we get our first look at Gunnar Stockton, the redshirt sophomore who is really in the, the Carson Beck role that Carson was in when he was backing up Stetson Bennett. Yeah, I think this is a big day for, for Gunner. You, know, you look at the situation behind Carson Beck, and you never want to bring this up, but if something did happen, there's not a lot of experience behind Carson. Only three scholarship quarterbacks on the roster, one of them being a mid-year guy in Ryan Puglisi, which we will not see here this afternoon. So this is an opportunity for him to get a ton of reps in front of these fans and start building some confidence heading into next season as QB2. Stockton steps up, delivers a deep ball, and it's caught. What a grab. Anthony Evans hauled it in. And Gunnar Stockton off to a great start in this spring game. Uh, that's how you build some confidence and get the fans excited. Throw the ball deep down the field on your very first pass. That's someone, too, I'm interested to watch. Anthony Evans, the speed of number five on the outside. Big play threat, and we saw it there on the first play. Quick hitter. Michael Jackson, the transfer from USC with his first grab. Take another look at this. Great protection up front. Might have been a sack, but we're going to be a little bit generous with the whistle. But great job going up, getting the football, and then the body control to come down and get a few extra yards for Anthony Evans. And Evans doing that against a five-star freshman cornerback, K.J. Bolden, part of this number one recruiting class. Both Bolden and Robinson are five-star corners playing on the second team defense in red. Paul turns the corner inside the five. Andrew Paul, one of the stable of backs for this Bulldogs team. Well, you watch defensively, something that really hampered Georgia last year was being able to set the edge defensively, and that's something they feel like with those four and five star guys they got a year ago, now year two in the system, been able to bulk up a little bit more through the training program that those guys are going to be better. It wasn't setting that edge, funneling everything back to the middle of the field. But right there, offensively, great job being able to hit it, get down to the one yard line. Right back to Paul, and he bulldozes his way into the end zone. Touchdown. This second team offense worked quickly. They go 75 yards in just four plays. Now, you brought up early on the, to start the broadcast of just some of the youth defensively. And, and you know, if you're young with your ones, you're going to be even younger, obviously, most likely with the second unit. So there's a lot of guys fighting to earn a spot on the defense side of the football. And right now, looks like the offense with both first series looking pretty good in Mike Bobo's second season as offensive coordinator. talk about all the four and five star guys on the defensive line but they've also recruited some big bodies at the offensive line position and that's one thing that really is the biggest difference from even a decade ago you look at the interior bodies offensive line defensive line you have guys that are six 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 seven six eight 340 pounds blocking up front he doesn't like small people he likes to recruit them big and really, when you look at what Kirby Smart has recruited since he took over nine years ago, it, it, it all starts in the trenches, Aaron. You know, offensive line, defensive line. When you look at the makeup of those national championship teams, they had competitive depth on both sides of the trenches. Well, you look at where he came from in Alabama. I mean, why was Alabama 
so successful for so long, and Nick, Nick Saban did that. He built them in the trenches. You look at Texas last year. What, why was Texas able to take that major step and, and get to the playoffs? They had an elite defensive line, guys that are gonna be drafted in the first round, and a veteran group of offensive linemen as well. So that is the recipe. This is still football. You still got pads and helmet on, and you gotta have some physicality if you wanna win games in the SEC. And with Nick Saban stepping aside at the end of last season, I don't think there's any question. If there's going to be another dynasty in college football, it's right here in Athens with Kirby Smart. Well, you you could make the case that you know they're kind of in it right now. Yeah. I mean, you were you you lost a national championship a, a handful of years ago to Alabama. You then turn around and win two national championships, have a 12 and one season. And now with the expanded playoffs to 12 and then possibly more teams here after 2026, you would think Kirby Smart and kind of what he's been able to build in Athens, Georgia, should put them this unit in the playoffs each and every season. Well, if you look at the last seven seasons, the worst finish Kirby Smart has had with his Georgia Bulldogs is seventh. So in the last seven years, Georgia has finished no worse than seven. That, that's an automatic qualifier to the college football playoff now. It is absolutely unbelievable. And yeah, and I think he's kind of put himself on that next tier or that top, I mean, essentially top tier. And he was there last year, but you can make the case that obviously it was him and Nick Saban up there as 1A, 1B for top coaches in all of college football. He sits now pretty much alone as king of college football when it comes to coaches. You know, it's interesting, a lot of people have to go into the transfer portal era now to get their star quarterback. Kirby Smart right now has a system where he has guys buy in, wait their turn, like Carson Beck did after Stetson Bennett. Now we're seeing that with Gunnar Stockton kind of in that sit and wait role. It's incredible that he gets these high caliber kids to, to sit two, three years before they're going to play. Well, you buy into the vision. I mean, for Carson, they're saying, hey, man, you get one, two seasons to be QB1 of this roster. Take advantage of that, and you set yourself up nicely. Back throwing on third down, and he overshot Love it there. I want to go back to the, the transfer portal because the portal does open in a week and I know there is a lot of uh, you know, why would you schedule G day on the same weekend as the Masters and I think they wanted to kind of make sure they wasn't bleeding into the transfer portal which opens up here in a few days but I asked Kirby's I mean the, there's a lot of coaches that utilize the next window to maybe fill some holes and, and, and Kirby doesn't really need to and maybe he does maybe he doesn't but you look at the roster there is not a lot of holes on this Georgia team where you feel like you need to bring in some more competition for the summertime. Yeah, I think you look at this roster and there's competitive depth at every position. It's not just, okay, we like our ones. Yep. No, it's not just we like our ones, we like our twos. We like the guys that, heck, we like the guys that have been in the mid-year. We like the guys that are coming here in about a couple months for summer and fall camp. So uh, he is he is built an absolute machine. And he hasn't had to use the portal a lot. Like, yeah, they hit some guys last year at the receiving position, but they build from within here at the University of Georgia. Here's Chauncey Bowens, part of that number one recruiting class for the Bulldogs coming in. How about how many freshmen they got to early enroll? I, I know that it's becoming more and more popular, but you look at it used to be, okay, a handful. It's practically the whole class. It's unbelievable. It, it really is. And, and not only do they get to participate here in spring, but a lot of these guys get to participate in, in, in the bowl practice. You get bowl practice leading up to that game, then you get to train with the team for two months and then be able to go through these practices, obviously, as a now a, a enrolled student. But it's a different world. It, it, 2009, when I came here and, and showed up to Athens, Georgia, there was three of us. Yeah. Zach Manberger, <laughs> Dallas Lee, and myself. And that was kind of the norm from one to three. And usually it was just quarterbacks. Right. Every now and then you get a couple of positions, but it's really just quarterbacks and rolling early. Now, like you said, Jay, half, the, half your class is already on campus. 
How much does that help the transition from high school football to college football? Oh, it's all about understanding the reps, the playbook, any chance you get out there and get film. And they throw, throw there from Gunner, and those are throws to the flat. You have to be accurate so the receiver can catch it and be able to at least give himself an opportunity to attempt to get the first down. And looks like they're going to give him just a little bit short there, but been really impressed with Gunner Stockton and his accuracy, not only on the deep ball with his first throw of the game, but on that one as well. How about the nice open field tackle by another mid-year guy, five-star K.J. Bolden? Wrapped up, made sure a yard short of the sticks. Let's check in down on the sideline with Taylor Davis. Well, Jay, we're not getting a preview. In Malachi Starks, one of the defense's leaders, is not playing today. He has worked his way back into some individual drills. But I have a storm. He don't roll like that with so many young guys getting their first shot out here today. I've seen him down here pulling a lot of these younger guys over, demonstrating, asking them what they're seeing, really taking the opportunity to make sure this is a teaching moment for guys that may see ample playing time this fall. Yeah, it starts doing really well with his rehab. They expect him to make a full recovery for the fall. He is a stud safety on this Georgia team. And Aaron, they they lose a lot of their secondary, so they're going to need Malachi Starks to to help this younger oh, 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 oh. unit come along. Yeah, and, and listen, if you're going to have someone to return, you know, I love the fact that it's, it's Malachi yeah, Starks, yeah, multiple-time yeah. All-American, one of the best safeties in college football, has a chance to be a top 15, top 20 NFL draft pick next season. But, yeah, this is his opportunity to really not only work on his fundamentals when he is able to go out there and practice, but almost be like a coach, which helps take your game to an even higher level when you really dive into the X's and O's. ETN bouncing outside, breaks a couple of tackles. There's a flag down, first one of the day. This might be coming back for the transfer from Florida. Yeah, it's going to be on Lawson, lucky number seven, the number two tight end. And that's something he's working on. Lawson, an incredible athlete. For those who remember last year's spring game, with the right side of your line, you're going to see him locked up and just holds Chambliss a little bit too long there. Lawson had a great spring game. Unfortunately, gets hurt, missed most of the season, but very athletic and has been working hard to improve his, his blocking ability to take his game to and make it a little bit more complete. You know, offensive coordinator Mike Bobo had a great line yesterday, which is, look, nobody can be Brock Bowers. There's only one. But he really likes the depth they have in that tight end room. Oscar Delp, Lawson Lucky lead that list. Back right over the middle. Dominic Lovett, his first reception of the spring game. They want him to take a step forward, become more of a real playmaker. Yep. And you saw flashes throughout the season last year. You saw flashes of him. You saw flashes of Carson's eyes right there, working from left to right, knowing that he has just to move a couple linebackers to be able to hit that dig right over the middle of the field. But, man, Dom Lovett in the slot, what he did at Missouri, looking for big things out of him this season as well. End of the first quarter. Kirby Smart, the Georgia Bulldogs, preseason favorites to win another national championship. We're giving you a preview today in Athens. Start of the second quarter at the Georgia Spring Game. Aaron Murray, Taylor Davis, Jay Alter with you. Carson Beck in the first team offense going against the Offside. first team defense. Defense, number 13. Five yard penalty. Results in the first down. Mike Bobo in his second stint as Georgia offensive coordinator. 2007 to 2014, came back in this role in 2023. Aaron Murray, you, you played for Bobo. You know what it's like to be in a Mike Bobo offense. Mm. And what can you tell us about how he's evolved in between his two tenures here? Well, it's funny. We didn't do a lot of shifts and motions when, when I was at Georgia, and I swear, 
in one quarter alone, probably more shifts and motions than I did in four years. So has evolved immensely just le learning from Munkin for the year that he was here as an analyst. Carson Beck has been off the mark on the deep ball so far. He, he's losing some big weapons. I mean, out of the backfield with Edwards and Milton and that three-headed monster in the receiving game. But it's not like they've got to rebuild here in Athens. They just reload. Oh, they yeah. got four and five stars coming up behind them. Well, you brought up the, the, the tandem of Oscar and Lawson and, and how they combine, can try to replace Brock Bowers. I think they're more than capable of having a heck of a season. But there's some young talent at the receiving spot that they're really excited about. Anthony Evans, who we saw a nice catch from earlier. Ra Ra and Dom, Dom Love in their second season. ETN sheds a couple of tacklers across midfield. He's got a nice burst out of the backfield, Trevor ETN. And that's something, too, that he just, you didn't feel like you had consistency last year at the running back position when it comes to just guys staying healthy and then the explosive plays, whether it's in the run game or in the pass game as well, catching the ball in the backfield. You lost Branson Robinson for the season. Hopefully he's back come the start of next season. But number one looks pretty darn good in red and black. Nice catching the ball earlier in the game and then a nice run there as well. Oh, we just showed you Edwards and Milton out of the backfield. Nice one-two punch a year ago. This year, ETN and Robinson. There's Mike Bobo calling it in on the walkie-talkie. Well, he was telling me before the game about, man, I would have been ripping you if we had headsets in your helmet back in the day. <laughs> I was like, I am so happy that I did not have you in my ear. Uh, I feel bad that Carson has to deal with that. I was like, when does it cut off? He said, no, no, it's still, it's like the NFL, cuts off at 15 seconds. But he said, not today, so I could be in his ear the entire time if I want to. Taking advantage of this one, Aaron. I'm told that the quarterbacks have been using that helmet comm system in the scrimmages so far this spring. Now, we did see this introduced in some of the bowl games last season, but the Orange Bowl was not one of them. So this spring scrimmages and today's G-Day game are the first game-type simulations these quarterbacks are getting to experience that system. Yeah, I told Bobo during scrimmages, I didn't need the headset because I could hear him screaming at me from the booth up here. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing worse than making a mistake in a scrimmage and hearing Mike Bobo's echoes throughout Sanford Stadium and you just want to go hide into a dark, you want to go hide in Uga's uh, little doghouse. A third and two here for Beck. Floats it up, one-on-one -on -one coverage. And it's hauled in, great grab. Dom Lovett, he's made a couple of good ones in this first half. What an absolute present from Carson. I love, look at his eyes, held the middle of the safety for the first two steps of the drop and then ripped him over there knowing he has one-on-one -on -one coverage with Dom Lovett on that inside fade, throws it to the outside, lets him essentially fall into the reception. Beautiful pitch and catch from 15 to 6. And you're going to see a lot of that combination this fall. Venture a guess that Lovett will be the top target for Beck. Beck lost it to the end zone, incomplete, was trying to go right back. Colby Young, the transfer, he's going to be a red zone threat, 6'3", 215 comes in from Miami. So when you get into this area of the field, you have to keep an eye on number eight in red. Uh, that's what the coaching staff told us yesterday, and Carson, like number eight inside the red zone, inside the top, in the 20. Big alert to be able to give him some one-on-one -on -one opportunities and great job defensively there, understanding from Everett that, hey, one-on-one -on -one the outside, he's probably going to take a chance. Stayed outside leverage. They run it with Robinson inside the five. And a lot of these guys making their first appearance in front of these, in front of these fans in their new uniforms and you know, Colby Young, nice receiver on the outside. You talk about his size. London Humphreys as well from Vanderbilt. So Georgia went to the portal last year, got two guys that we expect to take a big step. We'll see what these transfers can do now that here this afternoon, but come next season. Third and goal, back deflected at the line, and it's intercepted. 
Michael Williams. Now in his junior season, Williams, one of the best defenders on this team, and you saw why there. We met with Michael yesterday, and my goodness, a massive human being. And someone that's going to be moving around a lot, playing defensive end and outside linebacker. Extreme athleticism to knock it, locate it. INT for the dogs. Oh, we cannot wait. Saturdays this fall, the SEC exclusively on ESPN and ABC. Aaron Murray, Jay Alter, Taylor Davis down on the sideline, giving you a taste of what to expect from Georgia come the fall. Almost back-to-back -back terrific defensive plays. We saw Mike Cal Williams do it for the black team. That's Chris Cole, five-star freshman linebacker, number one player in the state of Virginia. You see why here. Oh, my goodness. Back-to-back, nice. -back, you said it almost closed interceptions. That's position that they really want to see step up and take their game to another level, the outside spot. You bring in one of the best from the high school ranks, already making a nice little name for him right with that play here this afternoon. Yeah, that's one to watch. Linebacker from Salem, Virginia. Six foot three, 225. And you come in with that five-star next to your name. People know about you. Robinson, Williams, Bolden, Cole, all five stars according to ESPN 300, number one overall ranked class. And, and all those guys right there, the top guys on the defensive yep. side of the ball. Well, and, and they did the same thing last year. A lot of elite guys on the defensive side they got in the recruiting class. And then Kirby doubles down, understanding that even in today's game, with all the rules that favor the offense, with everything that offenses do, I still need to be sound on the defensive side. Where do you feel like the strength of this Georgia defense lies headed into next fall? You know, last year was the DBs. I mean, last year is one of the most talented defensive backfields in the country with Javon Bullard and Malachi and Tyke and Kamari Lassiter. Uh, you lose three of those, and now you got to replace them. So the DBs are, are TBD. You know, you want to see what some of these young guys look like. I think they're very talented, but I would say in the interior, Warren Brinton flashed a lot for me last year. I think Nazir Stackhouse is an absolute stud in the interior as well. So between those two, some of the depth of D-tackle, and then the inside linebackers, those guys in their second season, kind of right in the heart of that defense is where you feel really good if you're a Bulldog. And they feel good enough about what they have on their defensive line coming back that we started to get into it. It is junior season. They're going to stand Michael Williams up more, yep. bring him off the edge. And we spoke with him yesterday. Was it your decision? Was it coach's decision? He said a little bit of both and just kind of see how it goes. Well, this spring, the transition's been perfect. You see all him make an impact play, picking off back on the previous possession. And they wouldn't be able to do that if they didn't feel that strongly no. about their defensive line. Yes, and I think they do. And that's a unit that returned some guys that possibly could have gone to the NFL draft, been mid-ground guys, and want to come out there and win one more national championship. Offensive line doing very well, giving back plenty of time. That is incomplete. Oscar Delp, the tight end, was the target. And Dan Jackson, who I think is in his sixth or seventh season wearing the G on the helmet. But you talk about leadership from Malachi Starts. Number 17 is a guy that's been kind of up and down with some injuries through his career, but an incredible leader in the locker room. Really great on that side of the football, just mentoring a lot of the young elite talent. And then, hey, when, when plays are to be made, Dan Jackson seems to be making plays, including a national championship pivotal block against Alabama a few years ago. And Jackson's first season, 2019. So one of the veterans on this 2024 Georgia team. Flag comes in after the Robinson run. Holy. 
offense, number 55, 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. Well, that's a position that, you know, we talked to Carson yesterday about, yeah, you're getting a new center. You know, you lose your center in the NFL. Jared Wilson comes in, and we kind of highlighted it a little bit earlier, but a guy that is faster than some of the DBs on this roster, getting up to 20-plus miles per hour in practice, can get to the second level, needs to continue to work on maybe initial contact, but overall, they feel like it could be one of the best centers in Georgia history. Well, when you have to replace Cedric Van Pran, easier said than done. Beck slings it right on the money. A dart. Colby Young, the transfer from Miami, brings it in. Not only was that an absolute missile on a dagger route, which is a very difficult throw, but Colby Young, I want to see his ability to kind of, with someone draping on him, turn, body control, high point the ball going backwards. That's what you love, that 6'3", six, 6'4", six, receiver. That is just a big frame over the middle of the field that, hey man, I'm just gonna rip it. I'm gonna throw it over a linebacker's head and trust that my big receiver is gonna make a play for me. Right on the money again, Lawson Lucky. First team offense trying to find their rhythm here after the defense has dominated so far. And somebody down on that sideline might like that the defense is dominating, Taylor. Someone who knows a thing or two about Georgia defense, Keely Ringo, joins me now. What's it like for you being back in your old stomping grounds? It's a great opportunity, you know. I just be able to be back to see my young guys um, grow and develop, man. That's really what it's all about. You mentioned the young guys, and these are this is a group that could see ample playing time come fall. What are some pieces of advice that you've passed on to guys whose name is called early in their career? You know, just taking it one day at a time. I'm trusting these coaches in the program, you know, as if um, the same situation I went through, you know. So I definitely know what it's like, you know. So just being able to see the guy just continue to grow, it's a great experience. You're one of quite a few Bulldogs who have seen their professional career take them up to Philly. Uh, how has your career here at Georgia and also in the SEC prepared you for the next level? And SEC and also at Georgia, there's nothing like it, man. Just the preparation and the way Kirby um, coaches us, you know, and puts us through hell almost, what it feels like, you know. Oh, uh, man, but um, it's a great feeling, you know, and just be able to go to the league and actually know what that feels like. Um, it's a great experience. Y'all still got that same college bond that's translated to the NFL? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, most definitely. Awesome. Now, Kirby Smart, a guy that also knows a thing or two about defense. How did being coached by a guy with such defensive wisdom help you as a player? Um, a lot, man. Uh, just, just breaking down the game, um, playing the game within the game is what they say um, a lot, you know. So just breaking the game, making it as simple as possible, you know, so you don't have to think out there. So I, I feel like playing the game like that makes it the best. All right, a beautiful day here in Athens. Go enjoy the rest of it. Thank you so much. A great insight there from Keely Ringo, of course, two-time national championship now killing it with the Eagles, which is basically like the Georgia pro team. Yeah, it feels it's, like it's everyone's in Philly. The Philly dogs. That's yeah. what they call them, the Philadelphia <laughs> dogs. Uh, and I love what he said. I mean, Kirby does make it extremely difficult. If you've ever been to a Georgia practice, you always hear the voice of Kirby over above ringing throughout the indoor. Well, Carson Beck told us yesterday that game days are easier than practice with Kirby. And again, Beck is in white. You're not supposed to touch the quarterback. Uh, Tate Ratledge, the right guard, rolled up on him. Luckily, Beck gets up immediately. Well, that's the goal. I mean, you do. You want to make Monday through Friday as difficult as possible. That way, you come out of here on, on Saturdays and just relax, have fun, play. And, and Kirby makes it as competitive as possible each and every practice. Well, and that's why on a scrimmage, especially with fans here between the hedges, you want to see that competition like it's a game day. And, you know, for, for some programs, coaches say that. This program, they mean Oh, they deliver it. The Kirby Smart even decided to take a timeout for his offense ahead of this third and nine. Well, it is a picture perfect day in Athens. Spring football getting you set for the 2024 season. Aaron Murray, Jay Alter, Taylor Davis with you. A third and nine, first team offense going against the first team defense. Beck over the middle. It's caught inside the five. Helmet off. 
Dominique Lovett. <laughs> the transfer from Missouri now in his second season with Georgia. Another big play. Well, I mean, we always hear positivity come out of spring. I mean, spring is everyone's going to win a national championship. Everyone's going to win a Heisman. Everyone's going to be All-American. So you never really know, but then actually seeing, because we've heard a lot about Dom. Dom taking his big step in year two. Uh, from, from from practice notes and all that, but man, you watch him on the field today. Number six really has taken and elevated his game to another level. That's his fourth catch, 73 yards to go along with it. Jump ball in the end zone, and it's caught. Colby Young. He's going to be a red zone threat this fall. Keep an eye on number eight when Georgia's near the end zone. Well, we saw the incredible body control by eight on the dagger out, being able to go get it a little bit behind him. And then once again, one-on-one, -on -one, defensive back draped on him. I love Carson Beck. Just get the ball out now. Throw it up. 6-3, one-on-one against Julian Humphrey. And great snag for the touchdown. A lot of talk this offseason. Who is Beck going to throw the ball to? McConkie's gone. Bauer's gone. Well, Lovett and Young have balled out in this spring game, and there's a deep wide receiver room here in Athens. A Kirby Smart has to be happy with his first team offense. Red zone execution, and they pull in front 10-7. Now Georgia's first team offense goes 10 plays, 72 yards for their first touchdown of the Georgia spring game. Certainly the best drive Carson Beck has had today. Six of seven through the air, 73 yards, and a touchdown. Six straight completions to finish the drive. Colby Young, his first touchdown in a Bulldog uniform. This will be really good experience here. A two-minute drill for Gunnar Stockton in the second team offense, and they'll get great starting field position. Is it not a lot of experience behind Carson Beck at all? Gunnar got to play a little bit in the bowl game, but for 14, that's something that I love talking with, with Kirby Smart about yesterday. He said, we finish every practice off, whether it's with Gunnar or Carson, with some sort of situation. Red zone, got to score this many points. You know, uh, two-minute drive, got to score this many points. So these guys are testing. We talk about the competition every single day in practice, but it's a great opportunity for him in Sanford Stadium in front of fans to get some work in, in a two-minute situation. In Stockton's reps, has tripled this spring compared to last spring. You remember he was in that battle with Brock Vandergriff to be the number two a year ago. Brock transfers to Kentucky, so it's Stockton really all alone in that two spot. The early enrollee freshman, Ryan Puglisi, big arm. They, they really like that true freshman, Puglisi, but he got banged up midway through spring camp after seven practices, so Stockton got all of his reps as well. I mean, that's what you want from a quarterback, and that's kind of how Kirby has always done his practices. It, it puts a lot in the coaching staff and the analysts to go back and watch all the film, but essentially if you go to one of them, there's two or three practices going on at once. One quarterback's doing seven-on-seven, seven, another one's doing one-on-ones, another one's doing 11-on-11, 11 11, and they just kind of continue to rotate, and you're just getting all these reps over and over again, seeing the plays against certain defenses, doing the two-minute drives, all that should hopefully make number 14 more comfortable if he has to play this year. Got it out quickly. Jackson second reception. Transfer coming in from USC, the senior out of Las Vegas. There's another play from a mid-year Justin Williams, number 19. Highly rated outside linebacker. Third and nine. Stockton slings it, incomplete, and nearly intercepted. Tried to squeeze it into a tight window. Jake Pope was there. Yeah. Two-man. You would love to see the receiver kind of bend it across the face of the safety. Gunner's trusting that he's going to do that, but still a very risky throw. 
great job defensively being able to keep Kyron Jones keep the slot receiver more towards the numbers and not let him kind of bend it across the middle of the field. Kirby's going to leave the second team offense on the field for this fourth and nine. Stockton puts it short. Turnover on downs. I, I think both the first team defense and the second team defense dominated this first half. Yeah, and it was funny because I mean the first the first drive for each offense looked really really good and once again man to man coverage, great job. Pretty much everyone blanketed on the outside in a two man defense. You know, first offense moved the ball down the field. I thought it was a touchdown by Dylan Bell. You know, our producer said no, so they didn't give it to him. Field goal, but a nice drive. Offense for the second team moves the ball right down the field, scores a touchdown. So offense kind of moving, and defense since then has really done a great job besides the last possession for Carson Beck and his offense of really slowing things down for these guys at the offensive side of the football. Troy Bowles, the sophomore, made a great coverage there. He's the son of Buccaneers head coach Todd Bowles. There is so much youth on the defensive side of the football, yet it's youth with reps under their belt. And maybe that's the thing you're just not used to seeing in the SEC, when, especially during this COVID year, you feel like everyone's a fourth or fifth year guy. Georgia's gonna have first and second year guys that have tons of talent and game repetitions under their belt. Well, it's also the transfer portal error. That's that as well as Kirby takes another timeout for his offense. Come out, come out but it just guys are impatient in nowadays game. But I mean, you look at the impact sophomores from a year ago, very highly recruited guys, Jamal Jarrett, 350 pounds, Jordan Hall, a couple of big time defensive tackles, Aguero at the nickel position, at star position. You know, Tyke did such a great job there at that spot. A lot is asked from him, so excited about that. But really CJ Allen and Raylan Wilson, two inside linebackers. They're really the leaders of the defense, making the calls year two for both of them. And we know what that position means in this defense and the guys that have been drafted for the University of Georgia. Deflected ball at the line of scrimmage again. There's a flag down. Offside, defense, five yard penalty, replay, second down. Aaron, you mentioned Wilson and Allen. You know, those two as sophomores to anchor that linebacker room. You know, why does the coaching staff have so much confidence for underclassmen to lead and make calls for this Georgia defense? Well, they played a lot last year. And you say sophomores, but really they're still freshmen. That's true. They're still freshmen. Sophomores in the fall. Yeah, I know, yeah. sophomores in the fall. But, I mean, these kids are they're kids. They're, they're 19 years old out here making the calls for potentially the number one defense in the country and the team that's won two of the past three national championships. It's a huge responsibility on Kirby Smart's defense, but those guys, by all accounts, can handle that responsibility. Defense has looked real good today, and it's another interception. C.J. Allen, we were just talking about him. And he makes a huge play there to pick off Beck. This first team defense has been dialed in in the spring game. Hey, everyone dropping, 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 and Beck just trying to force one in there. Really, he's keeping his eyes to the right to move one of the inside linebackers and just does not get it over fast enough to see that C.J. Allen was dropping right in the coverage on that seam route. Would have been better just checking it off for an easy completion. Once again, we just were harping on him. Number three, year two as that guy at the inside linebacking spot. Really taking that defense as his own. Well, that's a name Georgia fans already know, C.J. Allen, but the whole country is going to be talking about him this fall. Well, there's another new dog right there, number 16, London Humphreys. The transfer from Vanderbilt had a nice touchdown versus Georgia last year for those who remember the game early on for the Commodores, making his first reception here as a Bulldog in G-Day. Back-to-back completions from Gunnar Stockton. Jaden Reddle hauled that one in. I see a lot of two-man cover two, so that running back, man-on-man -on, -man on the linebacker, at some point's gonna be a good option. 
Stockton goes right back to the freshman tight end. And right now, you have to understand, what, what, what's the time for Gunnar Stockton? 33 seconds, 30 seconds. Get everyone lined up. This is great for the young quarterback. Trying to cash in after the C.J. Allen interception. Miscommunication there. Route was broken off. Good coverage by Ellis Robinson. ESPN had him as the number one recruit in the 2024 class. Number one in red. Well, right now, offensively, too, there's a good learning moment for Gunner, understanding that, hey, we've seen a lot of two-man, but when you start getting into red zone, this defense doesn't want to give them a field goal. They don't want to give up any points before halftime. So you've seen back-to-back -back plays now or inside cross-dog pressure from the linebacker. So you have to be kind of antennas up. Hey, they want to push me out of field goal range, so have to expect pressure possibly. Stockton in trouble, escapes it. Be short of the first down. But you'll be in field goal range here with the clock at 13 seconds left in this first half. Liam Badger on to convert this 38-yard field goal attempt. To tie it at 10 going in to halftime, and he does. Field goal attempt is good. No, no doubt, Aaron, the defense dominating the Georgia spring game so far. Hey, Georgia defense, hey, we saw some positives, some receivers on the outside. Carson made some good throws. Obviously, you want to get rid of those turnovers, but I have to say Kirby Smart's walking away pretty happy with what that first half looked like. Michael Williams and C.J. Allen, two linebackers that you're going to see all fall long for Georgia. Two interceptions in the first half. Uh, between the hedges on a game day in Athens for the first time in 2024. Big plays being made all over the field. Inside Sanford Stadium on this beautiful G day and you just never know who you're going to run into down here on the sidelines. The only ever two time John Mackey Award winner, a three time All-American. I really could go on and on. Brock Bowers joins me now, Brock. Now that your college career is in the rearview mirror, you were a part of so many special teams. You achieved a lot individually. How would you reflect on your days here in Athens? I mean, it was unbelievable. I mean, um, everything I had to experience, all the I mean, all the winning we did. I mean, it was it was awesome. I mean, it was uh, two national championships. Couldn't ask for anything better. So can't hate the winning. And like you said, you really performed on the biggest stage that you possibly could in college football. How do you feel like Georgia prepared you for the next level? Yeah, I mean, we go against uh, NFL dudes all day, every day at practice. So, I mean, uh, I mean, you, you can see it every year. We pump out kids. So, I mean, it's it, 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 it crazy every single day. I saw Coach Kirby Smart over with you as you were getting recognized here inside the stadium. A lot of love between the two of you. But he's a tough guy, knows a lot about football. How did he make you better? Uh, I mean, he, he pushed us every single day. I mean, super hard. I mean, uh, I mean, there's no better coach in the nation, I feel like. And, uh, I mean, he did everything he could in his power to make us better, even if that was pushing us, even if we didn't want to be pushed. So, yeah. You left pretty big shoes to fill, but guys like Oscar Lawson are stepping up to the task. What do you know about this room of tight ends that you're excited for come fall? No, I know Delp and Luck are going to try their hardest to uh, get out there and ball out. I mean, I know they're they're great players, they're great kids. So, I mean, they're they're out there today. I mean, just balling. So, I'm I'm happy for them. I'm excited to see what they do. What have the last couple months looked like for you as you prepare for the next step of your career? Yeah, just training. I mean, um, training and uh, biz, uh, meetings with teams and kind of everything like that. Just excited to see what happens. We're excited to see what happens for you, too. Thanks for everything you did in the SEC, and best of luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. We've got plenty of day. You don't want to go anywhere. The second half of the spring game coming up next here in Athens about to begin in Athens, Georgia, between the hedges for the first time in 2024. Sanford Stadium, 
ready to rock. Awesome atmosphere here for what is the first time we get a look at Kirby Smart's team in 2024. Preseason favorites. When you look at the landscape, who's going to be there to win a national championship? Carson Beck, a year ago, the question marks were, what's Georgia going to do at the quarterback position? He was a Manning Award finalist, silenced any doubters with that 13-1 and one record. Today he's been picked off twice, but as Kirby Smart told us yesterday, this is good on good. This might be the best defense that Carson Beck goes against in the year 2024. And he's been picked off twice. Michael Williams and C.J. Allen anchoring for the first team defense. It's the second team offense to start in this second half. Gunnar Stockton, Chauncey Bowens, one of the early enrollee freshmen out of the backfield. We've got Aaron Murray making his way down to the field where he is going to stand next to Kirby Smart and get an inside look. Love the access that the two time national champion head coach is granting us during this spring game. You know, it's interesting. Big off-season renovation here at Sanford Stadium is they've got brand new hedges. You know, between the hedges, they've been playing between the hedges since 1929. Well, new hedges put in this off-season. The last time that they got new hedges installed here in Athens, Kirby Smart was a sophomore playing for Georgia. They ruled out a sack. So it's going to take a little while for the hedges to to grow and mature because you're used to seeing decades old hedges Taylor and now these are baby hedges here in Athens. They're baby hedges. That is a good way to put it. You know they they have a ways to go but they're small but mighty. You know I still know I'm between the hedges. They're they're carrying the tradition. I just love the fact that the last time Georgia had new hedges Kirby Smart was a sophomore playing for the dogs. <laughs> they saw a lot of ball you know. Oh yeah. The, some of the best ball and now taking over at his alma mater and I love that interview you did with Brock Bowers Taylor it feels like every former player you talk to credits how hard Kirby coaches this team yeah. in practice and scrimmages to the success. It's the one consistent thing a very old school approach and I was actually talking to Brock before we started doing that. He's so humble and so grounded, and that's another thing that stood out to me about these guys that have been coached by Kirby Smart. Their perspective hasn't shifted regardless of the level of success they reach. A special teams miscue there. You're not really supposed to go after the return man. Anthony Evans definitely touches that ball, but you're not really supposed to go after the return man. So in the spirit of the spring football game, it's still the first team offense that will take over. And Aaron, you're down on the field to take a look at Carson back in this first team offense. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I got warmed up pregame, so I don't know if Kirby won here just with a limited amount of scholarship quarterbacks, but uh, no, it feels good to be back. <laughs> Watching from this vantage point, going to talk with Kirby a little bit about what his thoughts were from the first half. Hand off here to ETN, bottled up. All right, coach, thoughts from the first half. First thoughts from the first half. Thoughts from the first half. Uh, defense played with more emotion, more energy than they probably have all spring. And I thought they did a really good job against the offense. Offense had a couple unlucky breaks uh, there with a tip ball that the Carson gave up. So, what about number eight playing in the slot right now? Nice dagger route and the fade touchdown. Looks like a possible home run in the portal. I don't know about a home run. I mean, you got to go easy on home <laughs> runs. I mean, you guys make one play and y'all ready to say a home run. He's had a good spring. He works his tail off. Does a good job. Uh, 
quarterback. There we got stealth quarterback. Guys, stay away from the quarterback. Kirby Smart and all these number 15 go down once there in the first half. Don't want to mess around with him. Uh, let, let's talk about 15 Carson. Obviously, a couple picks. One wasn't, you know, unlucky, you know, with a tip. But overall, made some pretty nice throws, especially number six in the slot. Yeah, he's made those all spring. He's done a really nice job with his reads, really confident. Uh, o line's got to help him out a little more today. He's had a little more pressure than we've had. Uh, in, in most of camp. He's done a really nice job. That one ball, C.J. Allen baited him a little bit, made a nice play and fell back in in zone. Beck throwing here on a third and nine. Another deflected ball at the line of scrimmage. You just heard Kirby Smart not happy with his offensive line. It's a group that Beck heaped a ton of praise on, Aaron, but they have struggled, and that defensive line is feasting. Oh, that's a that's a unit we talked about, though, the defensive line. Those guys, big, physical, long bodies that able to get some push up front get those big hands up and knock it down and that's a good sign for George obviously you want that offensive line to dominate but man that defense line has looked good this entire spring game here this afternoon yeah that was Michael Williams again getting a paw on it he tipped one to himself earlier for an interception first team defense definitely getting the better of the first team offense as the Georgia spring game rolls on from Athens Well, it has been all Carson Beck and Gunnar Stockton at quarterback. Those are the two healthy scholarship quarterbacks here in Athens for the spring game. And now we get our first look at Colin Drake, walk on junior from Ennis, Texas, south of Dallas. It's interesting, Aaron. You were just speaking with Kirby Smart, and he was really happy with. How his defenses looked, but frustrated in particular with that first team offensive line, which was touted as one of the best in the nation. All right, it's funny, we we, we talked about that because Carson met with Carson first, and Carson brought that up about hey, this this offense line's gonna win the Joe Moorhead. I love the confidence from the quarterback, but Kirby said made sure he came in and told us, hey, that unit has not won anything yet. They need to continue to stay hungry and humble. So a lot of work to be done, but we talk about the competition. That's why Kirby wanted to go good on good today. You know, he didn't want the one offensive line dominating the second unit or the second, you know, first defensive line dominating the second offensive line. They wanted those guys getting after it, go back, evaluate the film, and like we said from the beginning, this may be the best offensive line and defensive line you face the entire season here this afternoon. Well, think about that when you consider the schedule Georgia has as Drake unloads a deep ball had it on the fingertips of Brandon Moody couldn't quite haul it in and Aaron this team's gonna have to go and play Clemson at Alabama at Texas at Ole Miss and yet you're right, this could be the best defense that this first team offense faces. Yeah, and then and, and obviously in some of those games on the road, you have to deal with the a road environment when it comes to just the number of four and five star guys that you're going against, guys that are gonna be drafted in the NFL. Yeah, this truly may be the best units that you're going against this entire season. And Kirby knows that, iron sharpens iron, and he feels like he gets that every single day in practice, so why not have that here for the fans this afternoon? You take a look at that 2024 schedule. It starts with the Aflac kickoff game in Atlanta against Clemson. What a battle that will be. Now, those are two teams that have combined for four of the last eight college football playoff national championships squaring off in week one. And then the road schedule is brutal at Kentucky, at Alabama, at Texas, and at Ole Miss. And then, of course, the neutral game against Florida wedged in between that Texas and Ole Miss weeks it is a gauntlet this year for Georgia. And here's Gunnar Stockton getting his first action with the first team offense. And how about Roderick Robinson laying the lumber? He is a powerful, stocky back, six foot, 245. And this kid is a monster, Aaron. How, how is it being up close seeing that? I don't want to tackle him, that's for sure. Seeing him live on the field, I was right behind that play. And seeing him turn the corner and put his shoulder down with that speed, size, 
against a corner, you gotta go low. And I think right now, obviously in a spring game, you're not trying to take him with his legs out, but DB's gotta go a little bit lower on the big guy. I tell you what though, too, being on the field and seeing 13 Michael up in person, we saw him yesterday standing down with him, just an absolute behemoth of a human being. I mean, just just looks like a top five, top ten pick in the NFL draft. And you know, we we highlighted that earlier on the game. Just what he's doing this season, moving more to that outside linebacker, stand up role, gonna rush the pass, obviously, but continue to work on his athleticism in space. But my goodness, seeing what he looks like in person, he is very impressive, and you see why he's been so disruptive this afternoon. Puts his hand in the dirt to try and stop the run here. You know, they're going to mix and match him, like you said, Aaron. Sometimes like that, his hand will still be in the dirt, lined up on the line. Sometimes they'll stand him up, and he'll rush as a linebacker. Jalen Walker making the stop there for this Bulldogs defense. It's interesting. Williams was very honest with us. He goes, now as a junior, sure, I have to play well individually, but I have to let the younger guys know the standard, what it means to play defense for Georgia. I got Kirby back here. There. Hey, Kirby, 14, Gunner made a great play to start the game. Thoughts on 14 so far? He's had a really good spring, man. He he's understands the offense better, playing with confidence. Good throw there to the back. Good job. I mean, he's been really good. At first, he's, he started great there with that big throw. Um, he's really a mobile guy that we don't get to use that right now because we're not tackling him, you know, so he doesn't get to run around and do quarterback design runs that he can actually do. But his spring has been really impressive for me. I'm proud of him. All right, I just talked to you about number 13 walking off the field right now, but man, he's impressive to look at in person. Where have you seen the big growth from Michael this this offseason? Well, he's he's practiced. He, he had an injury last spring, so he couldn't do it. And uh, this, this this spring he's been able to. It's been huge for him to get the spring in. He, I, I thought you know, he missed some practice time in fall camp that hurt him, and he's in a lot better spot now. Nice hole for the offensive line. Andrew Paul runs right through it. Powerful runner, Andrew Paul. Redshirt sophomore out of Dallas at 129 yards a year ago. He'll take another step forward this season, Aaron. All right, impressive running back play. Coach, I want to go that position right now. A lot of injuries last year on and off, but it seems like you got a nice stable back and still one to come in the fall. What have you seen so far from those guys this spring? Uh, they've done a good job. Uh, we've had some injuries to that position. Some guys have been making up cash it out here today. So AP's getting a chance to step up. But I, I've been really pleased with those backs. They've done a good job. Stockton goes right back to Paul. Swallowed up immediately. Yeah, there's number three flashing once again. Had the interception in the first half. And that middle linebacker spot coach, we've seen guys get drafted. We've seen the importance, obviously, in any defense, what those guys do from a leadership standpoint. Talk about those two young guys, especially three, and what you've seen from him. Yeah, three and five. Raylan and CJ have done a great job. Jalen's getting to play today. Jalen had an ankle, and uh, we weren't going to play him, but he really wanted to go and wanted to get out there and play, so he's getting to play a little bit too. Those guys have shared that inside backer role and done a really nice job. Defense continues to swarm. They are the story so far. We have a dog down. Christian yeah. Miller running off the field. Well, they're just, it's impressive the, the size. And you're seeing some of these young guys play on defense to the rotation. I think that's what they want to obviously get into here on the outside. They feel really good with their ones, but Jeff, I thought you brought it up earlier really well. This is a team that is very deep into the twos where they feel like those guys are able to rotate throughout the ball game, get those young guys even more experience and repetitions here in the offseason. And Gunnar Stockton, the backup quarterback, working with the first team offense for the first time, showing off the arm strength. But just too much on that ball, a third and long. Tried to squeeze it into Ra Ra Thomas. Oh, that was a big drive for Gunnar. Be with the ones. He's kind of sprinkled in there throughout the, the spring camp. But like I said, man, there's not a lot of, if you had to point to maybe one concern for Georgia, just not a lot of experience behind Carson Beck. You have one of the premier quarterbacks in all of college football. And knock on wood with that elite offensive line, he stays healthy the entire season. 
but they're going to continue to work Gunner, I'm sure, throughout the offseason and fall camp, get him comfortable with the ones just in case his number is called at some point. Now the defense continues to dominate 2024. Getting a preview of Kirby Smart's Bulldogs. A beautiful day here in Athens. We welcome you back inside Sanford Stadium. Our very own Jay Alter's wife, Liz, is actually a very proud Georgia alum. And head coach Kirby Smart has a message for Jay, Liz, and little Ellie. Hey, it's Coach Smart here. You and Liz's unwavering love and resilience in the face of Ellie's challenges are truly remarkable. As you prepare for her next surgery, I pray you find strength and comfort in each other and those who are closest to you and your family. Dog Nation is behind you, and we are all sending our thoughts, prayers, and positive energy your way. Thanks, and go dogs. Oh, man, it's... <laughs> pride myself on being professional but got to wipe the tears out of my eyes there uh, my my wife Liz is a proud Georgia alum class of 2016 overlapped with Aaron Murray she was up in the stands watching him in the student section and and we welcomed our first uh, daughter our, our baby girl Eleanor about six months ago and she's uh, gone through four surgeries early in her life and you know mentioned uh, to Kirby that you know, Liz watching the dogs in the fall when Eleanor was in the hospital for 75 days really helped take her mind off everything we were going through. And I didn't know that was coming. <laughs> Great job by our production crew keeping that a secret. And uh, wow, to, to get that from, you know, the, the best coach in all of college football, what it means to our family and our extended family, takes your breath away. So thank you to Kirby. Thanks, Taylor. Thanks, Adam, our producer, for uh, surprising me. And, and there's something to be said. I'm sure we're not the only ones that football and, and being a passionate fan can be such a distraction, such a blessing when you're going through a difficult time. The, the comfort of seeing the Georgia Bulldogs or whoever your team is that you root for on a Saturday. And we certainly had that this fall. How about this for Gunnar Stockton? He just ran with the ones, and now he's back running with the twos. Busy day for the backup quarterback. And there's going to be a lot of good film to go back for Gunnar and go back, you know, back and sit down with Coach Bobo and this offensive staff and just say, hey, this is what we need you to work on. If you're truly going to be our number two guy here to start the season, number two quarterback on the best team in America, and one play away from being the guy these are the things that we need you to work on over the next four or five months before fall camp. And like Kirby just said, speaking with him, he's really taken some major strides. And I feel like they think they, they're just scratching the surface on what 14 could possibly be here when given the opportunity someday. One thing that Coach Smart said they made a concerted effort to do with Gunnar Stockton this spring was after a play, pull him over and say, hey, what'd you see? What coverage was out there? And he said most of the time, this kid is getting the right answers. It's just a matter of acclimating to a game environment and continuing to grow. Well, I also think, too, I mean, he was part of a, a two-way battle last year, and Brock ended up being more that number two guy. And, you know, I was in a situation when I got redshirted. He kind of go through the motions that redshirt year. You know, you don't really feel like you're going to play, maybe not as engaged. And when Brock left to go to Kentucky before the bowl season, you know, his game really elevated because his mindset was, I'm one play away from possibly getting in the field. And they've seen a major shift of what he's been able to do both in the classroom when it comes to football and then on the field throughout bowl practice this offseason heading into the spring game. This defense just swarming to the football. This is exactly what you're going to see all fall. And Kirby Smart told us, yeah, this is good on good. You're going to get your best look at our first team defense, our best look at our first team offense. And for all the love coming 
into the spring game about the best offensive line of the country. Carson Beck couldn't say enough good things about those five up front, and they might be the best offensive line in the country, Aaron. They're just going against a very motivated defense today. Yeah, motivated defense, like Kirby said, just maybe a little bit more passion. And when you get two elite units, the team that the one that brings the most energy is going to be the one that goes. And first catch of Arian Smith right there. That's a guy they've also said has really taken his game to another level this offseason. 11 with that elite speed is going to be dangerous down the field. Yeah, hard to guard in a deep wide receiver room as we head to the fourth quarter in the G-Day game. Well, if you know anything about Georgia football, the fours are up. Fourth quarter, that's where Kirby Smart wants his guys hitting harder, outrunning the opponent. Well, today they're playing each other. Offense against defense as we get you ready for the fall. One of the preseason favorites to win the national championship. You take a look at what Kirby Smart and Georgia have done over the last three seasons. They have as many losses as they have national championships. Two losses over the last three years, two national championships in 21 in 22. And Carson Beck back at quarterback. And he's motivated. Still playing here the fourth quarter. You, you look at other spring games across the country, maybe their quarterback will give up, a, a, you know, first quarter, second quarter, but not many quarterbacks are going to play into the fourth quarter in a spring game. It's just different down in Athens, Taylor. Jay, I loved our conversation with Carson Beck yesterday. He was very transparent and very honest with us about his decision to come back. He said, I've been a part of national championship winning teams, but I wasn't playing. And I feel like there's more business for me to do this year. He said this preseason, he's also handled it completely differently, even down to his lifestyle. He said, I don't want to be someone who's rattled in pressure. If this team wins, I'm going to have a part of it. And if this team loses, it's going to be because of me. A lot of ownership fully taking the reins a much different Carson Beck approach than what this team saw from him last spring yeah it was a year ago that there were a ton of question marks around the quarterback position and Kirby Smart said it was really the spring game that he took the reins of this team and carried it through the fall had a terrific season Manning Award finalist 13 and 1 and it'll be interesting to see how he continues to progress now that there's no doubt about it. This is his team. And the first real pressure situation that Coach Smart alluded to was that Auburn game. He said in spring is when he started showing his moxie, his pocket presence, that he could be the guy. But that Auburn game was his first really tough environment where his back was against the wall. He said after that is really when he took off, and he hasn't looked back since. And you mentioned it. He was on the roster for those two national championships. But he doesn't consider himself a national champion. He wants to be able to be the quarterback that brings another national championship here to Athens. That's a competitor. Well, Aaron Murray has rejoined us in the booth after getting down on the field up close. What did you notice down he there that maybe we're not seeing up here? Well, like I said about Michael, they're just massive. I mean, they are. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, I cover this conference. I go to a lot of game, a lot of teams, and. And, and get to see them, you know, pre-game warm-ups and on the field, you know, see them when they put their shoulder pads on. And, and that's the one thing that Kirby is, is really focused on is, is just recruiting really big people and then turning them into even better athletes when they get here through the strength program, through the way they train and practice. I mean, they, they, they're the team that walks off the bus and you turn your head like, oh, my goodness, these look, this looks like an NFL team. A quick hitter to Ra Ra Thomas. He's another one in this wide receiver room. So you might not have the standout like a Brock Bowers or a Lad McConkey, but the depth that you have at wide receiver, so many weapons at the disposal of Carson Beck. And also, Aaron, I mean, you played this position at Georgia. It's also on the quarterback to bring the best out of his wide receiver. He needs to make them better. Well, I think it, it's him making them better, which you, you put the ball in certain positions to give those guys the opportunity to make a catch that obviously makes everyone look good. But I also think there's a trust factor, too, now. And you saw that last year, I would say, after the Auburn game, you know, when he was able to find a way to win the game there on the road. I thought they started to see, like, okay, we got a guy at the quarterback spot. Let's start putting more of the offense on him. 
like now you fast forward through another spring, fall camp, and heading into the season, I think Coach Bobo and Coach Kirby Smart are saying, we have our number one quarterback in college football. Let's put the ball in his hands more times than not and see what he can do with it. Carson making an audible at the line of scrimmage. Ahead of this third and three. ETN. Couldn't quite turn that corner. They put a lot on the quarterback. and Kirby's not shy. Even in the recruiting process, he'll tell a kid, hey, in our system, it's a quarterback system. We have a high volume of plays. A lot falls on your shoulders. It takes a special type of person to fit that system. It does, and which is why, you know, the, the, the transition was almost seamless when, when it came to Munkin moving on to the NFL and Bobo stepping in. Bobo came in as an analyst. This is Kirby just always one step ahead. You bring Bobo in, a guy that's cold, plays at a high level. You have him learn from Munkin. That way the, you, know, you understand, hey, I got Carson Beck ready to take over. Let's not change the system up on him. Bobo was able to take over the same playbook, the same terminology, put his little twist on it, but really allowed Carson to kind of take it and run from what he's done previously under Munkin. I know Robinson moves the chains here on a fourth and one, but look at Michael Williams. Wow. I'll tell you, that is a grown man, number 13. Reminds me of a guy I played against, Jadavion Clowney. You just look at him from the <laughs> defensive end spot. And you're saying, uh, we got to find a way to get four hands on that dude because he's going to be a disruptor both in the run game and the pass game. Has two batted balls, an interception. Just feels like he's always around the ball. To me, Williams and C.J. Allen are the two that have really popped on defense for Georgia. I mean, just the amount of plays that C.J. Ha had last year. And you know, I think with a young guy that was just a freshman and still is a freshman playing that middle linebacking spot you're having to diagnose the offense make the calls everything's happening so fast for you now i feel like year two for him and it's still going to continue to grow you really the, the game's going to start to slow down you can make the call a little bit faster get yourself in a better position to go out there and play fast And another deflected ball. Jalen Walker, who Kirby told you they didn't even want to play today. They said, you know what? You've been dealing with an ankle injury this spring. Why don't we sit you out? Don't force it. Get ready for the fall. He's like, no, I want to play. Yeah, I want to get me in there. Go. I think all these defensive guys in the front seven are saying there's a lot of depth and a lot of stars everywhere. So if I don't go out there and perform in practice and G Day, yeah, I may start working my way down because there's a five-star guy, a young pup, that's ready to take my spot. Lawson Lucky shoved out of bounds. C.J. Allen again on the stop. I mean, you look at the offenses. I know we went through their schedule not, not long ago. You did. But you look at some of the offenses they're going to face this year. Texas, Steve Sarkeesian, Quinn Ewers. You know, they did a good job getting some receivers this offseason. Ole Miss with Lane Kiffin and Jackson Dart and the receivers they have. Alabama and, and, and their new identity on offense from, from Kalen DeBoer, what he did at Washington. There are going to be some explosive offenses that they'll face. And, man, i got to give you confidence that that front seven can hold up and dominate and let you play a little bit more too high. Beck taking a shot to the end zone. Couldn't quite connect with Colby Young. I liked what Kirby <laughs> had to say about Young. You're trying to give some love to a transfer who's come in and in just 15 practices made a big <laughs> impact on the offense. You called it a home run transfer, and he said, I don't know about a home run. Uh, Kirby doesn't like that, uh, that rat poison. Don't you be saying that. I don't need, I don't need these kids get a big head out here, but he has had a very impressive spring from all accounts and obviously made some big time catches today where it looks like this kid is going to be able to come in there and, and play really well, especially in situations. Oh, well, you're a father. You know, the parents have to be strict, but yes. Uncle Aaron coming in to Athens, he Give can all the treats. <laughs>
So the next time we'll see Georgia is in the 2024 AFLAC kickoff game, taking on Dabo and the Clemson Tigers. That should be a great one to help kick off the college football season. The winners of four of the last eight college football playoff national championship, those two programs. It's going to be one heck of a meeting, man. You look at the schedule just all year long with the, the conference realignment and the excitement of almost every single week, all these big time matchups. And obviously now ESPN, ABC owning all the SEC is going to be awesome for us. Yeah, AFLAC kickoff game is the nation's longest running kickoff game. August 31st, you do not want to miss it. Georgia and Clemson. Gunnar Stockton still in and still balling out. That's Tuggle, freshman from Indiana. That ball got some zip on it, too. A few hitches, feeling some pressure on his backside, and just threw a little missile out there to the young mid-year Tuggle for a nice completion. We've seen Gunner today from the very first pass of the game, deep throw down the field, really showing off what he can do vertically. And that's London Humphreys. So again, the depth at wide receivers on full display here at the Georgia Spring Game. I know a lot of people are excited to get 16 from, from Vanderbilt. Feeling the Falcon, this could be our new Latin McConkey. And you, know, you look at the depth chart right now, you're like, man, I got to get through this guy and that guy and that guy. So you know, I know we, we might have said it a couple times today, but I know a lot was lost, but there is a lot coming back at the receiving position and some good key transfer guys as well. Well, think about this. We've been playing football for nearly two hours now. 18 different players have caught a ball in this game. And Georgia hit the portal like every team does now in modern college football. In particular, picking out some offensive weapons. ETN out of the backfield. Young and Humphreys expected to add to that wide receiver room. Yeah, all of them are going to obviously play their roles, but I'm really, you know, if you're a Georgia fan, ETN at the running back position, you've seen him flash throughout the game. I think Colby, you know, as he continues to learn the playbook, it's going to be more situational third downs, red zone situations, and then Humphreys will continue to work into that slot position as well. Plenty of room to run here. Inside the 10, tiptoeing down the sideline. And it's White into the end zone for the first time in a Bulldog uniform. The pride of Cartersville, Georgia, part of this star-studded number one recruiting class in the country. And nothing better than being a guy that's supposed to be in high school, coming out there on your very first G-Day, get a nice simple ball in the flat. And then turning it up, making a move. Great block on the outside there from his fellow mid-year toggle. And then getting in the end zone. See, these are the moments why you come in as a mid-year guy. Aaron, I think you were making your way up back to the broadcast booth, but I'm just so impressed that Beck and Stockton have stayed in this entire game outside of one drive. Oh, I, I, I can expect Gunner. You know, I know they want to get Gunner reps. We've talked about that. I mean, he just needs to get as much experience as he can. Um, but they just, they, 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 they want, and most teams want four scholarship quarterbacks. It's, it's difficult in today's game because of the transfer portal. If you're a number three or four guy, why not go somewhere else and have a chance to play? So it'll be interesting if they get another someone. But I, I, I know that they are very excited about Ryan Puglisi, a mid-year yeah. guy that just unfortunately has been banged up a little bit and unable to play here this afternoon. So overall impressions, we've been saying it all afternoon long. Georgia expected to contend for their third national championship in four seasons. What stood out to you over the course of these two hours? Just how good that front seven is defensively. I mean, this is and will be one of the best offensive lines in the country. And to see that defensive line hold up and almost dominate this game, it, there is youth on the back end and and I, I talked about this I believe in the first or second quarter that would be a, a somewhat of a concern of you, know, you got Malachi Starks but there's a bunch of guys that are young and unproven well the, the best way to protect that secondary is to play more too high safeties to play a little bit more shell defense and then allow that front seven to go out there and dominate and I think based on what we've seen today they're going to be able to do that they're going to be able to stop the run with a six-man box and play a little bit more too high safeties
Beck buying himself time. Floating incomplete. Couldn't quite land it safely to Andrew Paul. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, you know, think about some of the great teams in years past, especially in today's game. I mean, so many of these offenses are going to face, are going to want to get out in 11 personnel, three receivers, one tight end, one running back, sometimes 10 personnel with four receivers. Put a lot of stress on the DBs. You need to protect those young guys in the back end. And the more that you can do that and get after the quarterback, the more success you're going to have. Kirby Smart in Georgia going to deal with a gauntlet. We talked a lot about Clemson as the opener. That road schedule is brutal. At Alabama, at Texas, at Ole Miss. But the good news for Georgia fans is with college football playoff expanding from 4 to 12, you can absorb easily one loss, probably with that schedule, two losses. Easily two. And make it into the top 12. Well, the other positive as well, you look how tough and I would say exciting that schedule is. Right. It flips, and now those teams get to come to Athens the next year. So Woo. Texas is coming to Athens, Alabama's coming to Athens, Ole Miss is coming to Athens. So you, you, you go enjoy Austin and Tuscaloosa and Oxford this year, knowing that, hey, next year you're coming to our hometown between the hedges. And uh, that's what makes this new SEC era with Oklahoma and Texas joining even more exciting. All these big time brands we get to witness week in and week out and year in and year out here in the SEC. But it's a gauntlet. It really is. And, and, and especially week one versus Clemson. I know Kirby Smart is using that obviously as motivation for this team to really work hard, not only with these practices in the spring, but over the next four months leading up to that big time game. So what's going to be a tougher ticket to get? Yeah, 2025 Texas, Alabama here between the hedges or two hours from us uh, Masters Saturday, Sunday at Augusta? Oh man, I know it's been very tough for Georgia fans to get everything booked up to go to Austin. I think partly due for the fact that they have the F1 race there. But I know Georgia fans are going to be very excited to welcome the Longhorns to Sanford Stadium in, in, in a couple of years from now, or I guess in a year from a year and a half from now. You're still looking for your master's ticket for tomorrow, right? I am. I am. Trying to still coach Bobos. Yeah, Brett Thorson, who is the charismatic Australian punter for Georgia, he gave a little golf-style master's impression of some highlights from Georgia's year a year ago. Here, the ball is snapped. It's a screen to McConkey. He's meant to throw. He says, don't worry, follow me. He takes off. He makes one miss. Then he takes the ball all the way. And the dogs, fourth touchdown of the game. The dogs here in pump formation. And the good looking man from Melbourne, Thorson, punts the ball away. And well, that may bring rain. Wise decision and a fair catch. And Thorson jogs off. Uh, Thorson's a character. I love that. We got to get him on some golf coverage. Uh, the Australian, and he's a great punter as well. He hosts a podcast with Tate Ratledge, the all SEC first team right guard. Those two are hilarious. Oh Highly God. recommend listening to those guys. Absolutely trip. He's such an incredible personality. Like you said, first and foremost, an incredible punter. Uh, it's a boot can really knock that thing uh, as far as you need to go So get him back not just for the only the entertainment aspect But also when when needed to punt to knock someone in the 20 is a huge huge get for Kirby smart in this football team You need somebody in a locker room that can keep it light oh, in this goodness. high stress SEC environment, right? Well, that usually does fall on the specialists, you know, they're always a little <laughs> bit goofy in there. Got a little bit more time on their hands. Who was that for for your team when you were at Georgia? Who was the funny guy? Keep it light in the locker room. Oh man, we had a lot. Uh, Too Arthur, many. Arthur Lynch. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe that's why we didn't win a championship. Too many goofballs. Unless that's not enough guys that were focused on you know the day-to-day -day grind. But uh, yeah, we had some characters. I know they got some characters here. Warren Brinson, a defensive tackle. Uh, future media star himself. Uh, he, he's a pretty good character to keep it nice and light and fun. And, you know, once again, let's not forget, we think these guys are professionals because they're getting paid, but we were all 18 to 22 year old once. 
trying to enjoy life as a normal student athlete, you know, you got to find some sort of balance every now and then. Third and 12 here for Stockton. They blow that play dead for a sack before Stockton could get rid of it. That's another highly touted freshman, Joseph Jonah Ajanye out of Texas. He and Justin Williams, high school teammates, both early enrollees, both ESPN 300 talents. I think the biggest thing, too, for Georgia this year, uh, last year was such a talented football team, but always the thing that hurts you is, is the injury bug a little bit. And then they were banged up from start to finish and some key guys. And, you know, as of right now, they feel like they are healthy, getting healthier, and, and definitely on the uptrend, hopefully heading into the season of keeping those guys in a position to be able to go out there and execute on the football field. Kirby Smart not happy with the, his Australian punter. Wanted to pin uh, inside the 10 there and said went for a touchback. We just heard his uh, terrific golf style impression of some of the Georgia highlights from a year ago. And this is what it's all about. Good on good, first team offense, first team defense, two minutes left. Yep. This is like practice for them. This is something they do every single day in practice, some sort of situation for Carson to work on his two minute drives. Just so unique when you look across spring games across college football that we're here with two minutes to go and both first team offense and yeah. defense are still on the field. It, 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 at this point, you know, the first teamers would have been done maybe a quarter, quarter and a half ago. And you have Georgia's best players on the football field right now, which is an incredible treat for the fan base to be able to see essentially, once again, two of the best at their respective units in the country doing it out right now in the middle of April. And in a pressure situation, you know this defense wants to keep this lead, have some bragging rights all summer long going into the fall. ETN out of the backfield. We've seen some flashes from him. Mm. He's got some real pop to his game. We saw it at Florida, and now he brings it here to Athens. Oh, the quickness, the ability to catch the ball in the backfield. I mean, that was a play right there. Carson's checking it down. You catch at the line of scrimmage, you make someone miss in the open field. And all of a sudden you turn into a third and, and short and manageable situation where you could run the ball here if you wanted to, but that's the type of ability that he's going to bring to this offense this season. Back again, pressure bearing down, had to get rid of it, dropped by Arian Smith. <laughs> Now a decision to make if you're Kirby, leave the offense out here for a fourth and three instead of punt it away, which would effectively end the spring game. Yeah, they got three timeouts to go, so you could. But now let's put some more pressure on, on Team Red and Carson Beck here. Four to, fourth and short, essentially for the game right now. See if 15 can execute. Dogs defense sends pressure tipped, and the defense delivers again. The Georgia spring game belongs to this Bulldog defense. Well, listen, when you can't tackle the quarterback and you know you can't get sacked, the next best thing is get your hands up in the air and make plays, and they've done that this entire game. Once again, great job there. Number 11, which always looks good in the red and black, Jalen Walker making the tip to almost close to seeing the deal for Team Black. Nazir Stackhouse <laughs> loving it over on that sideline. He's made 29 straight starts for Georgia. And Malachi Starks, who didn't even play today, another veteran on that dog's defense celebrating with the first team D. So somebody's got to win, someone's got to lose. The good news for Bulldogs fans and for the first team offense is that defense yeah. is their teammates come the fall. 
going against him today was difficult. Yeah, you may you would have loved to see a couple more plays execute down the field offensively. I thought we saw some flashes from some Dom Lovett and Colby, and you saw ETN make some great plays. But this is a defense that's going to contend for one of the better ones in the country this year. And I thought you saw some good stuff, really good stuff today from Gunnar Stockton as well. You know, very much in command of the offense, going where the board needs to go, finding the check down, accurate, executing some of the downfield concepts that Bobo was calling throughout the game. I think you walk away from this saying, okay, we know we have Carson. We feel absolutely incredible about 15's ability, but Gunner's got something to him where if, if, if something happens, 14 seems like he's definitely progressing in the right way. Trying to punch another into the end zone here with a minute left in the spring game. Stockton throws to the end zone a little too high. Over the head of Cole Spear. Ellis Robinson in coverage. Number one player in the class of 2024 according to ESPN. Stockton denied a touchdown. That's a terrific play. Jake Pope with a great read on that ball. He's had two pass breakups this afternoon. Try to gun in there. Maybe just a hair bit late. And ball's in the back of the end zone. You want to throw a little bit higher so a defender cannot make a play. But a tremendous job by 22, Jake Pope. Extending out here late with less than a minute to go in the spring game, trying to make a play for his defense. And what a treat this has been. Getting a great preview. You know, a lot of spring games are sneak peeks. This is a full on preview of what's to come this fall for the Georgia Bulldogs. Absolutely will be one of the preseason favorites to win the national championship. It starts with trying to win the SEC. Something they failed to do a year ago, and that's been a huge chip, a huge motivator all spring long for these guys. Oh, we get one more opportunity, another two minute drive for Carson Beck with a few timeouts, only down a touchdown, unable to convert last time, four and out for this offense, but one more crack at it for Mike Bobo, offensive coordinator, second season here for the University of Georgia, second go around at the University of Georgia in that position. It's a lot of throws for a spring game. I don't remember the last time I've seen a starting quarterback throw the ball 42 times in a spring game. Now he's going to sling it a couple more times on this final drive. Three timeouts, 50 seconds to work with for Beck. A couple of broken tackles just shy of the 50 for Dom Lovett. Feels like when the chips are down, Beck's first ring is going to be number six in red. Love it. And, and, and especially him playing in the slot. I think Carson feels very comfortable working over the middle of the field. Not all quarterbacks like to do that. There's just a lot of bodies there. Uh, Carson being a better guy, bigger quarterback, sees the entire field well. So if you can get six matched up against a nickel or a linebacker or a safety, you really like that. But no, I'm with you. Six is, Dom Lovett has really impressed today. Showed some wiggle, not only catch, but then able to get north and south afterwards. 93 yards for Lovett. Back, clean pocket. Right on the money. Carson Beck threads the needle. Ra Ra Thomas. And just like that, the first team offense rolling. I can't tell you how good this throw is. This is elite as elite can be. Two man. Man-to-man -man coverage with high safety help, throwing to the field in an absolute rocket for number 15. Beck in the red zone, takes a shot, swatted incomplete. Good protection there. Dan Jackson and Patrick Taylor to deny Lawson Lucky a touchdown. I, I, I don't know 
if another many quarterbacks, maybe a handful of quarterbacks, not only in college football, but the NFL can make the throw that Carson just made. Uh, it's a 40, 40 plus yard throw to the sideline and maybe got about 15 yards, 10 yards off the ground. And you thought he'd be a first round pick if he came out in this draft. He wanted to come back to win a national championship. Felt he had unfinished business walking off the field after the loss to Alabama. Beck floats to the end zone. Love it into the hedges. And he held on. Tom Love it. With the highlight of the spring game, a touchdown to tie it with less than 30 seconds to go. Wow. Ah, you got to go for two now. You got to go for two. We ain't walking away with a tie. You got to go for two, but this was an incredible. I don't even know. I got to see the replay. I don't know how he caught this football. He pins it on the back of Patrick Taylor. Look oh, at this. Unbelievable catch. Six has had himself a statement game here. Into the brand new baby hedges goes number six. And you're right, Aaron. Kirby Smart saying, we're going to settle this. No. Beck's just there to hold it for Woodring. No. Hey, this is best case scenario. You can tell him, hey, we all played hard. Someone needs to eat the, the beanie weenies and someone has to eat the steak. This one looks like it's going to be tied at 20. There is 27 seconds left to work with for Gunnar Stockton. What a catch by Lovett. We got to see that one more time. <laughs> Spectacular. I good thing that fence is nice and forgiving. Well, it's a new fence as well. Yeah. So new hedges. Well, they, for the made, first a time fence. In they made a new fence. They made a new fence after that one. But yeah. I think that question, that narrative was answered today of who will Carson Beck be throwing the football to in 2024? Yeah, seven catches over 100 yards and a touchdown to end the spring game. What a day for Dom Lovett. And no doubt that was the the best play of the game on either side of the ball. Carson Beck looked really impressive getting the ball back knowing you need a touchdown 51 seconds and he scores in less than 30. Well, that's the other thing too about having a veteran quarterback. There's a sense of defense number 31. There's a sense of confidence as we go look at the face mask on the previous play, which I don't know about that. Um, of situational football. That's a great thing with, with a guy that's been here forever. There's a confidence in the huddle that Carson's been there, done that, has done the two-minute drives, has done the red zone, third downs, all of that. It's just a sense of confidence, not only from him, but the entire football team. Now Kirby huddled the second team offense together. 21 seconds to go. This is what you do every single day. Now you're doing it with TV cameras and fans in the stands. Situational football. That's another first down. Michael Jackson, the transfer from USC. Well, we've seen each quarterback in this game have multiple two-minute drives, whether well, it's before halftime and I don't know if I've ever seen this many two-minute drives before an end of a game either. But this is this is great teaching tape, and Kirby is going to obviously continue this scrimmage to make sure that they get these reps in. This is as thrilling a finish as you'll find in a spring game. Again, most teams across the country, the starters come out at halftime or midway through the third quarter. Stockton, under pressure, has to throw it away. Ten seconds remaining here. They just need a field goal, too. So for Gunner understanding that, hey, I just need probably somewhere in that seven to ten yard range, taking completion. We have a timeout. Your previous play is able to find the back. 
that's always a good option. You know, everyone's always worried about the down the field play. Guys are dropping into coverage. You find a running back, allow him to get seven or eight yards, get down, call a timeout, and allow that kicker to go out there and win the football game. And Kirby right in the ear of his backup quarterback. And another incomplete pass thrown by Stockton there. The defense has ratcheted it up here. Pressure coming on that play. And just left the level of passion, commitment, competition that you've seen on both sides of the ball, first team, second team, has just well, exploded. I've seen spring games after the offense just scored for, for Team Red, where the coach is like, all right, we've seen enough, let's go home. Right. Kirby's, this is this is what makes Kirby special. Kirby's like, no, we, I have an opportunity to get one more two-minute drive with my quarterback in my offense and my defense also be in this situation. I'm going to take advantage of it. And Kirby changes the down and distance. Instead of fourth and one, it's third and ten for Stockton. And he put it right there. Great ball by Stockton. Just couldn't get hauled in. So Covey White, who had a touchdown earlier, dropped it. Mm, beautifully thrown football, one-on-one. -on -one. Runs an incredible route, says White. Steps on the toes of the defender and then gets with from there. And a perfectly thrown football. And we're going to get a big boy field goal here. About 54 yards to see if Team Black can walk away with a three-point win. And it's Liam Badger, the backup kicker. Peyton Woodring's the starter, but Team Black has the backup. Badger from 54 had the distance, but nowhere near the accuracy. The clock at zeros, tied at 20. Kirby Smart has to be happy with how this spring game went. Just competitive, hard hits, great plays, great catches. Dom Lovett stole the show there, tying it at 20 with a great grab right at the end of regulation. And Taylor Davis is down with Kirby Smart. Thank you, guys. Well, Coach, another addition to spring ball in the books. What were your takeaways from today's G-Day game? Healthy. <laughs> Number one thing is healthy. Guys got to compete, uh, put on a show for the fans. We still like to play football around here in the spring, so <laughs> when we get a chance to play football, we want to play football. Proud of the guys for competing. And we like to watch football, so we appreciate it. You said at halftime you saw more emotion and intensity from your defense in the first half than you had seen all spring, and that includes a lot of young guys. What impressed you on that side of the ball? Well, they tackled better today, batted a lot of balls, which is huge in football. Offenses have a huge advantage right now. you got to knock balls down when you get a chance. I thought we did a good job of that. I thought the offense came back out in the second half, and Carson had some good drives there. You mentioned Carson Beck. How would you evaluate your quarterback play today? Well, I'd look at it from a whole spring perspective, and yeah. he's had an awesome spring. He's had a really good spring. Uh, I think the defense did affect the quarterback a little more. They had a little more pressure in the pocket, but he handled that well. We ended in a tie, but was there a reward on the line today? There's always a reward on the line, so we have to share the reward now. Everybody's getting it. Everybody's and a win's a reward. That's right. A healthy is a reward. And reward. not. That's and right. not. Thanks for the time today, Coach. You go, dogs. We're also going to grab Carson back, guys, if you don't mind. Uh, Absolutely. Plenty, plenty of questions for my guy here. Well, Carson, another spring for you, but you told us this week this one felt a little bit different than last year. You have the reins for this team, and you went out there and showed why. How did this spring game feel in terms of the potential you know this team has? Yeah, um, obviously the spring game is a little bit different. You know, it's very vanilla both sides of the ball, offense and defense. But, you know, overall, you know, spring practice, I think we've had a really good spring practice. We've got a lot of work in, um, and I'm super excited to see what this team can do as we go into the summer and the fall. There's been a lot of talk about who you were going to be throwing to this year with guys like Bowers and McConkey moving on to the next level. But uh, you shared the wealth a lot today. There were a lot of guys that ended up with catches, but love it with that crazy one to close this thing out. What have you seen from your crop of tight ends, wide receivers that gives you the confidence this offense isn't going to drop off? Yeah, especially in the spring game, you know, we're going to try to get a lot of different guys in there, you know, see what they can do, try to give guys chances. Um, that was a crazy catch at the end by Dom. You know, he had a really good day. He's also had a really good spring. Um, but yeah, no, our wide receiver core and those tight ends and those running backs, you know, they've had a great spring overall. And like I said, you know, I'm excited to get with them in the summer and continue to work. 
you got to go check out the replay of that catch. It really was mind blowing. Now the next time we see this team suit up and play, it'll be week one against Clemson. What has to happen between now and then for this team to reach its full potential? Yeah, um, just stay ultra focused. Uh, we, we obviously have a goal and that's going to be our next game. So as we go into the summer, you know, focused on that one game, that's our goal to, you know, win each and every week. And, you know, our mind will be locked in on Clemson as we start, you know, back up in June. A lot of good ahead for this team. Go enjoy it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Now, what a, an addition of the G Day game here in Athens. An awesome atmosphere between the hedges. And Kirby and Carson both said it. The competitiveness that both sides brought to this mm -hmm. game, they're going to bring it to the fall. Oh, yeah. One thing you know about Kirby and this team, they are going to compete every single day. And we touched on it. Kirby said it. Healthy, healthy, healthy. Something they battled all last season. But right now feeling really good as they head into the next phase of the offseason here at the University of Georgia. A great preview of one of the preseason favorites. Georgia going to try and win a third national championship in four years. That does it for the spring game in Athens. Aaron Taylor, I'm Jay saying so long from Sanford Stadium.